Video for George Logajana spent the day with Trammell at his humble yet safe age headquarters in Scarborough. Well, the conductors see when I, when I come out of my RV, I'm an electrical engineer. I mean, I'm at the top of the technology totem pole. I ought to be able to best um, know what the technology is capable of. We are bypassing the major media, and we are going straight to the computer hackers. And it, frankly, it's our only way to get the message out in large numbers. Right. And we're also happening to hit the group that are computer literate. It's interesting that the only channel to actually have me on any major amount of time is the, your channel for the younger generation. The uh, older people have had no exposure to this at all. Maybe the CDC and CTV figure older people aren't going to understand the disc, therefore they've excluded me from every debate. If we agree to use our own chips in our own poker game instead of using Caesar Salas chips, mm -hmm. as long as the collateral is there, our chips are as good as the next guy's chips. And the same thing goes for money. If we want to use our own currency instead of their interest bearing currency, as long as the collateral is there, why should we pay interest to use their chips for a fee when we can use our chips for free? Beautiful! The yes. world according yes. to John Turmel. Yes, sir. <laughs> Have a safe drive. See you guys later. Okay. Bye -bye. Station. Bye bye. They have arrived. Coming to you live from the Trump City Building in Toronto, welcome to another installment of Much Music, Election Uncoverage. That's right, I said uncoverage. You know, there are 14 registered political parties in this election. But coverage for most of them has been pretty sparse on TV. In fact, most of the fringe parties are running what you might call a tubeless campaign. Now, for the smaller parties, buying TV time, in many cases, has been doing this. But here at Much Music, it's different. We've invited the leaders of all the political parties to come here and face the music. Welcome everybody to the Much Music Environment. Those of you familiar with our intimate and interactive series will recognize the format we have here, an environment full of people, many of them first-time voters. Folks, give yourselves a hand. These people, <laughs> these people are ready to join you at home by fax and by telephone to speak with our candidate tonight. We'll introduce him in just a moment. But first, as with our intimate and interactive format, we want you to give first the phone numbers, please. We have a phone number and a fax number to give you. They are by telephone. You can call us for free, 1-800-265-6824, or fax us at 416-591-MUCH, and uh, we'd love to hear from you as we will hear from the people in here. Now, of course, as with our intimate and interactive format, music plays a part, or at least musicians do, and uh, tonight we're going to have a musician interviewing our political candidate, sort of turning the tables on the usual procedure. Uh, to introduce this guy, I could say that he is now courting his third generation of Canadian fans. He's a man who's, um, I say, a staunch Canadian, staunch enough that he said no to Bill Clinton twice. Um, and failing that, failing any other more introduction, it's my pleasure to introduce Randy Bachman. Randy, come on down. Randy's going to be interviewing the gentleman who is the leader of the Abolitionist Party of Canada, fielding uh, 70 or so candidates, I believe, in this election. Uh, John will uh, straighten that up for us, those numbers. Please welcome John Trumell of the Abolitionist Party of Canada. John. <laughs> In this corner, gentlemen, we'll make our way over to the hot seats, please, right over here. Tonight we're introducing you to a brand new party, the Abolitionists. They believe in barter and gambling, but they don't believe in interest rates or income taxes. In fact, they want to take the actual plates that are used to create money and make them publicly owned. Check it out. Let's take a look at the player's card. 
It's roots in the old social credit league. 42 year old team captain John Germell has zero interest in banking. Get it? In fact, the team champions take the place home for the people. Germell is a strong running game. He's running a record 33 elections, earning him the nickname King of the Fringe. This champion is a big gamble for Germell, and he's no stranger to the gaming table. He's been banned from Vegas for card counting and served time for illegal gambling. Watch this team for trades, though. The abolitionists think the dollars are greener on the other side of the field. You call your party the abolitionist party, and I'd like to know what is it you want to abolish, and what is the rest, what is the rest of your platform, and if your um, party takes charge on October 26th, or you win the election, what changes will you make? Well, we believe that most of the problems that exist are due to a lack of money. If you look at your newspapers and your news reports, on a regular basis, everybody's screaming for more money. Mm -hmm. Now, there's an inherent flaw in the money system. Every time you borrow a $100 bill at a bank, and you walk around with that $100 bill for a year, when you come back to the bank, you owe them 110 Now, the $100 bill didn't grow, but the debt grew. And there is an automatic imbalance that goes on in the banking system so that this is the Laplace transformation of the amount of money you got stays stable at 100 bucks. You got that in your yeah. wallet. But this has got a positive feedback with interest. Now, engineers will understand this, but unfortunately, all it means is that the debt starts to grow by itself. And it'll double and double and double in time. That's called an exponential. So there's the imbalance. The amount of money you have in your wallet stays constant, but the amount of debt in the banker's book for it grows. Therefore, that's why we never have enough money to pay off all the debts or do anything right. Do you so, to abolish the interest? Abolish the interest rate, and there's a working model of the system spreading all over the world. It's called the local employment trading system. Yeah. We have this disc here on our lapel, and we have several different articles which recently came out of the newspapers which explain how this works. And this is a barter? It's a barter system. Yes, it is. And did it, didn't it start in Canada and other yeah. countries come up here to learn about it and, and they've now started? In yes, we're, we're proud to say that it did. It started out in B.C., out in Courtney, B.C. Yeah. And uh, we have some press clippings here. It's so all I can do to demonstrate to people. Of course, they showed this one, which says abolitionists have zero interest. And it's a computer program, actually, that has no interest, okay? The, the code can be programmed so that it operates with no interest. Instead of the computer program they now have on the Bank of Canada's computer, which operates with interest. Now, this is an article out of the Australia Bulletin, which explains how the barter system is working in Australia. In one town, it reduced unemployment from 13 to 9 percent. Now, that's one big hit, a 4 percent decrease in unemployment done privately by private people, no governmental inter intervention. Big article. In the Globe and Mail on May the 15th, talking about green bucks and wealth, green bucks coming to Canada. Big article in the Toronto Star on June the 20th, which shows the explosive growth of the system around the world. There must be around 450 to 500 systems, and at least 150 of them in the last half a year. What happens to the banks when the system... Oh, poor banks. You know, we're, we're, sorry, the banks are going to end up closing when the better program takes over. If you have a deed to a house and you can go to a bank where you're going to get a loan without interest and a loan with interest, just service charges with our yeah. bank, by the way, because we do pay our bankers with a service charge, yeah. where would you go? You'd go to the bank with no interest. Do you have your money in a bank now? Do you have a bank book? Well, yes, I bank? do, but uh, I'd still rather give up my usury. I mean, we're both good Christians, and if we both wrote, we read our Bible, we know that usury is the biggest thing in the Bible. Why? Because it causes failure. If you lend the suckers all $10, and you make the suckers all promise to pay $11, well, at the end of the game, only nine suckers come up with 11, and you grab the 10th sucker's collateral. Okay, and then you tell the other nine suckers how many chips you got, a hundred? Gee, now there's only nine pieces of collateral. The money's inflated. And they sit there and they take it. Every year they report how much of our money, how much of our wealth disappeared, and we just go, oh, so we lost 10% of our wealth in Canada last year. Who got it? Well, all we're saying is that these barter systems, this local employment trading system, which is a system of trading employment locally, can be used nationally. And we're saying that other 9% they didn't get because they did it private. If we use the software and the public sector computers, put people to work repairing roads, 
sewer, doctors. It would help unemployment because people them. can provide a service exactly. and not have to go on the So go the on. proof of the pudding happens to be there that interest-free loans work. And there was an article in the Toronto Sun just last week called No Interest Loans May Save Us. So we have no interest loans may save us where he explains the island of Guernsey has been using an interest-free national currency since 1816. So the proof of the pudding is here. He says with zero unemployment, high standard of living, low taxes, and very low inflation. Is there anywhere else in the world that reports zero unemployment, no inflation, low taxes? So is there anywhere in the world that has a system like this in place? No, actually, Guernsey is the only one that has a, nat a national interest-free banking system. And all we're saying is the software is here. The proof that the lo local employment trading system works. You have a computer program. And here's how it works. You've got a butcher, a baker, and a dentist. Yes. They're all broke. If you were to lend one of them, your friend, your brother, a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. he could now buy from the second, who could buy from the third, who could buy from the first, who could give you back your hundred, right? Mm -hmm. So by dropping a little bit of liquidity into their seized up engine, you've liberated employment. You didn't have to use a federal hundred dollar bill to do that. You could have used a computer hundred dollar bill, and that's how green dollars work. If there's idle unemployment out there, and they accept that they're going to work an hour for 10 green dollars, everybody, you don't need their cash. You can use your own chips. It's so why? It's no different. The green dollar is really no different than a paper dollar. Except there's no interest. Except there's no interest. It's the only difference. Right. So uh, there's all these proofs, all these different articles about Canadians, PhDs in economics, who are saying interest-free by the Bank of Canada is an answer. And we've been pushing these bumper stickers ever since the early 1980s. So I've been trying to abolish interest rates for a lot longer than the last month. Is this similar to give the plates back to the people? I know that's one of your yeah. mottos or yeah. campaigns. Well, By plates, you mean the plates that is a license to print the money. That's right. Yeah. Because my favorite example is a little poem I wrote to explain how it works. So we're going to do it with you, Randy. All right. When you were little, did you ever dream of printing cash? Oh, yeah. Filling up and your wallet and put money, money, money in yeah. a flash? Creating money accurately means having the plate. The stamping of some paper into notes best demonstrates, or stamping metal into coins, or blips computerized into your bank account deposit, checks now authorized. So whether paper, metal, bolts of electricity, having the plate is printing money absolutely free. Now, so governments of old mandated treasury run plates to operate without the interest and rip off rates. You see, the problem today is, if you, if you were to go out and spend the money, print it and spend it, people would object. They'd call it counterfeiting and yes. send you out to jail. Right. But what if government would let you print it up to lend, okay? With only what you could collect in interest to spend. If you could print and lend a thousand out at 10%, you make a hundred interest on printing that you lend. But if you could print up and lend a million out, you'd get an extra hundred thousand dollars for your fee on debt. If government stops using its own place and comes to you, a billion prints and net a hundred million revenue. You're kind of like a, a Robin Hood. With everybody being taxed. the banks and giving to the... Yeah, but you see it already. They haven't seen it yet. With everybody being taxed to pay you interest of all the scams in history, having a place to set. Even if you can't print and spend it, printing it and lending it and collecting interest is enough. Now, here's the point. So governments of old mandated treasury run place without the interest the middlemen at ripoff rates. Most governments today, to banking industry, have lost control of money place. So interest is now a cost. To service debt in 1990, Canada's request was $40,000 million paid in interest. We're taxed over $100 each per month to pay for interest to holders of our place they gave away. We abolitionists, we get the place back from the banks. Have Treasury create the money, only for our thanks, small printing charge. The interest we save, your 100 a month, 1,200 a year, 40 billion a year, would be split up, I recommend, for each to get a $100 monthly dividend. As if you owned a share in the incorporated state. And, the, and our debt, our national debt. And income guaranteed for life, no question, no debate. So the killer question first is, 
Would you agree control of money plates by banks should end? With all that interest diverted to their monthly dividend? That's what our party's for. We're saying it's illogical for a government to give away the money plates to private people and get in line, borrow it, tax us to pay them interest. And that's what's going on. And that's what those articles show. So, Randy, you gave us the right answer. Right. And I guess in a nutshell, I just want to make stress to the people out there that even though this might seem like a, a techie program, because we're saying it's high tech, you know, it's, it's computer science, the point is, this is good Bible. This is interest thanks. free, and I want to give you well, one thank of those, you, John. Randy. we got to move on. Okay. Thanks. Lance? Thanks, Randy. Thanks, John. Uh, politics is poetry.